This fishing combo is super portable. Being in college, it's incredibly awkward for me to be carrying a 7 foot rod between doors. Last year I used the telescopic rod on catfish and it performed pretty decently. I hopped on Amazon and as I was scrolling I found one brand, Pusino, that happened to be the best seller. So I got not one, but two combos. For under $50, you get a telescopic rod and a spinning reel. But I'm a bit skeptical about the quality and if the rod would be strong enough to withstand a hook set. So let's take these on the water and see if they are worth the money. What up guys, back at it again with Fisher Yen. <laughs> Hope that's catchy, <laughs> get it? But nah, that was just for a friend who really wanted me to do that for an intro. <sighs> Hope you're happy. Busy, busy boat ramp today. Woohoo! The chances of me coming out here today we're actually so slim. First of all, it was gonna thunderstorm a ton. The, just the radar was looking horrible. I had a class that kind of interfered with the fishing hours a little bit. So I went ahead and just prayed about it. I was like, Lord, I, I just commit this to you. You know, it, chances seem very impossible for me to come out and fish today, but you know, you are the God of impossibilities. And then two hours ago, I got an email saying that my class was canceled. And then I also look at the weather radar and boom, it's all clear, it's just overcast, so now we got perfect fishing conditions. And I'm out here with Ian. We're gonna, you know, try and slam him today. This man, he just, oh sorry, I keep on splashing you with my paddle, but he just catches them so good all the time. So I'm fishing with the fishing master today. Our verse of the week comes from Cosmo PVP. I hope I said your name right, but he shares with us Romans 5 verse eight. It says, but God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. How amazing is that? Just knowing that God showed his love by having Christ die on the cross while we were his enemies, while we were sinners, while we didn't even love him. I mean, just put it in fishing terms, right? Let's say you just keep on casting over some guy's line. You just keep on getting hung and he's losing a lot of money's worth of baits because of you. And yet at the very end, he comes up to you and he's like, hey man, let me give you some lures. You know, it's just like, love that we didn't deserve and that's the thing about christ he died for us while we were still sinners oh, it's just it's amazing so let's go ahead get out on the water today on us glorify god as you know i have two options today i have this one that claims to be made of carbon fiber and the rod is let's find out um seven foot medium heavy okay that's a little heavier okay and then a 1.8 meter medium action. So that's under seven foot, I think. But one bait that has been killing it at this lake so far is the chatterbait. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this carbon fiber one. Put some 25 pound test line on here, just cause why not? And listen to this. Ooh, it's got a bell drag kind of standard with everything. One pro about these telescopic rods is they're super easy to put the line through the guides because the guides are all right here. And now it's time to extend. Oh, tricky part is getting this to be straight. I just want to make a cast already. Oh, here Ian, take a look at this. Just feel it and let me know how you think it is. It's pretty good. Would you fish with it? Honestly, probably would. Let's find out the fishing capabilities of this. Whoa, okay. I will say, this rod is pretty sensitive. White charter bait, here we go. By the way, you probably can already notice my voice is a little lost right now because I was camping and I inhaled a little too much campfire smoke. So bear with me because today's commentary might not be the same as usual. But here we go with our first cast, okay? Whew. Please don't break, please don't break. Oh. <laughs> Well, the line came off a little rough because I just put it on, so that's kind of to be expected, but ooh. Well, I can definitely feel the chatterbait vibrations. It's wild that this thing collapses into like less than two feet. Oh, leaves are turning colors and it's just, oh, fall is wonderful. It's a great time to go fishing. We're gonna catch one on this bank, hopefully. Oh, it launches. That's the good news. I mean, this reel is kind of heavy. I'm used to fishing with Shimano Vanfords and you know, these are the lightest of the lightest. So going to a reel that's like, I don't know, cost maybe $5 to manufacture. 
it's just you could tell the quality difference but hey this thing was around forty dollars so i can't be complaining too much i'm just super worried about these joints that make this a telescopic it does not seem as durable as a one-piece rod not to mention we're kind of risking it here by throwing a 16 dollar jackhammer might not be my smartest move ever. First snag of the day. Oh, that's a big one, bro. What do you reckon? 10 pounds? 10 pound stick? There you go. Really good at untangling. <laughs> hey, that's our first of many today, okay? Where are these fish at? The reason why we're rocking these bladed jigs today is because we just got a lot of rain. And this was like relatively warm rain, so I think it pushes these shad up shallow in these creeks and then the bass are just chasing them all around and a bladed jig it makes a great vibration in the water that these fish just can't withstand before we take another cast let's check out bass forecast and where it tells us the bass are i have become so reliant on technology backs of creeks hey, yeah bro bro, bro bro careful 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 yo ian ian what my fingers hurt. I just got them tangled. Oh, oh, oh dude, 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 careful, careful. All right, you yeah, watch right your hands. No, no, no. Ian, you just caught a four pounder. That's like a four, four pound. Oh, what? Gotta get my scale. So, bass forecast is correct with that point. They are indeed pushed up against the back of the creeks. I'm gonna say 3.5. 3.94. 3.94. Let's go. Here, let me grab you a picture. Hold them out straight up. Yeah, just casually catches a four pounder. Bye bye. <laughs> Ian, you're ridiculous, man. Give me some. Oh! Ooh, dude, you make fishing look way too easy. <laughs> Is it PB? Is it PB? Dude, Ian just caught a PB. What? Persistence, man. That's how you caught him. I was just about to get ready to give up on this cove, but Ian's just like, you know, I'm gonna keep casting. It's all about mindset. Also, I'm super curious, with this cold weather moving in, when do you guys just pack up your rods and, you know, don't touch them until the spring? Is it around November or even December? Or if some of y'all are crazy like me, you fish all winter long. Comment down below, what month do you stop fishing in? Oh, I'm stoked. Ian just caught a PB. You know, honestly, I can just go this whole day without catching anything, but I'll be so happy because the Lord blessed us with a big one. The skunk for the boat is off right now, so, I mean, opportunity is in the air. Ian was using a chartreuse and white. Chartreuse stands out a little better in this water clarity, but we're gonna see if just the noise. Oh, what gear ratio even is this thing? got eight ball bearings so 5.2 to 1 it's not bad and I will say I am having no issues feeling my chatterbait with this rod I think there's a common misconception that just cheap Amazon fishing gear is 100% all the time trash a lot of you know name brand gear like for example Luz or even Abu Garcia they're manufactured in some of these same factories that you see uh, a lot of these Amazon products on. And so I think the thing that separates name brand from an Amazon product is sustainability. Yeah, look at that. Somebody was uh, doing some not so good activities, especially if they were under 21, which uh, unfortunately a lot of these college students on campus. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna clean that up. Do you have another slobber knocker? I do. Really? Do I want to? Can I just borrow one? Yeah, I don't want to take it from you. Yo, Ian is the man. He just caught his BB and he's got extras of the bait that he was using. This slobber knocker feels weird. It does not feel like a bladed jig that I'm used to throwing. Well, let's cast this out there. Buckley slobber knocker. Kind of like this reel. Part of me really just hopes it holds up and lasts for a while because, I mean, these telescopic rods are just perfect for traveling. I mean, if you think you're going to go on like a family vacation or something and you see that there's like a lake house, but you don't want to bring your seven foot rod, oh, just pack this and you'll be good. It is now 350. If I don't get bit on this big rod in, I don't know, 
by five o'clock, I'm gonna go over to the little rod and go with a super finessey bait. There might be a fish sitting on the tip. A fish on? Are you serious? Let's go. Ian, you are so good at fishing. On the Inu rig? Yeah. Dude, I don't know how you do it. Bro literally made that rig inside his dorm room today. He was like, you know what? People all over are fishing this one rig. I'm just gonna DIY it. Pulls out two pounder. I forgot that I had a whole second rod, which is a little bit lighter action. We're gonna go with the Ketchco tightrope jig. This is our finesse bait for today. Oh, we got both telescopics out now. Who wants to eat? Does anybody feel intrigued to eat this slobber knocker casted on a portable fishing rod? It is time to switch to a lipless crankbait. And right now, our main goal is to actually just catch a fish. The chatterbait, if I just keep on throwing it for the rest of the day, chances are I might land a big one, but again, the chances of getting bit are a little slimmer. Oh, hear those rattles? That's the sound of some incoming fish catches. It's time to hit them and hit them hard. You know, Ian, I don't think I've caught a bass in more than two weeks. I'm going on a long-term skunk right now. My hope is to break it today. Oh yeah, there's a tree. I mean, the rod's holding up pretty fine. You guys see the bend on it? Okay, and crashed. All this equipment is getting stress test right now <laughs> with all the bending against bushes and trees. It's come to that point, guys. We have less than an hour to fish. So I'm gonna go ahead and go with the old trusty wacky rig. What I'm noticing is these guys might want a slow presentation. Really? Let's go, Ian. All right, dude, we moved to the right spot. Let's go. Oh, what bait is that? Your Inu rig? Yep. Bro, let's go, Ian. You know, it's definitely not the equipment that's the issue today because Ian caught his four pounder using a catfish combo and you know, I'm using perfectly fine rods and reels. When you've been getting skunked for more than two weeks, there's just something about it. I mean, like, there's no denying that these fish are biting right now because Ian's caught three whole largemouth bass. They're all very good sized ones too. I've got so many things I could trip over right now. <laughs> Life of a fisherman, always unorganized and organized. How was your fall break? Just, pretty good. Got some sleep. that's what's up. Oh, dude, dude, dude. Oh, praise the Lord. We got one. Woo! -hoo! Finally. Guys, this is three hours worth of fishing. Oh, look at that rod just. Oh, that's a one pounder. Let's go. Grab the mouth. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That's what uh, three hours of grinding with some telescopic rods gets you. I'm over the moon. You can let her swim back. She deserves to swim another day. Well, these things aren't the most fanciest combos ever, but I think I'm gonna stick these in my car. And hey, you never know, maybe I'll catch a world record bluegill with these. 